record in case. Okay, so story time and we're in my classroom and there's a spider on the ceiling. So I see the spider on the ceiling. So can you imagine sitting in our classroom at school and you look up and there's that spider sitting up there. One of those nice hairy baboon spiders. And is this, is this a good story so far? No, because I would have been out of class by now, because I'm so hard at class. Okay, cool. <laughs> 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 yeah, just like that one. Just like the... Exactly. You'll look just like that photo of that big hairy spider. So, there's our spider. I'm just going to draw a little spidey. How many legs does a spider have? Eight. One, two, three. Look at that. I'm actually secretly an artist. Okay, there's our spider. Do spiders have tails? Yeah, it's got a tail. So, there's our spider sitting on the ceiling. Now, I'm scared of spiders as well. I don't like the idea of the spider. So, I ask my friend if he can come in and to, to his say he's just going to, he needs to reach up and catch the spider off the ceiling. Now the spider is also a bit scared, so it's not going to move. It's just going to sit exactly where it is. I don't want to reach up and touch it and grab it, but my spider-loving friend says, no, 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 don't squish it, don't chase it away. I'll come in. I've got this thing, I'm a spider whisperer, so I can reach up and I can just grab the spider gently and take it outside for you. And we're all happy and everyone's happy here. The spider's happy, it can go outside and live peacefully outside. And so we go. But there's a twist in the story. Because my friend is blind. Maybe that's an advantage that he's got because he can't see this terrifying looking spider and just sees it as this warm, cuddly spider. Okay, so we're together so far in our story. Okay, so my friend's blind and he's happy to come take the spider. Now, how do I describe to him where the spider is? Because I can't say, well, it's three meters from the door. So I'm going to draw a picture here of, here's the ceiling. And I'm going to look from, doesn't really matter. Where would I look from? The door. I'm going to look from the top and say that the door is over here. Here are the windows at the back, the cafe is underneath, and this is happens to be north facing as well, not that it matters. But there's our door. So I need to describe to him where the spider is. So let me draw my spider nice and pretty over here and say, Okay, here's our spider. Three, four, one, two, three, four, with its tail and its two eyes. So how do I describe to my friend where the spider is and so that's where the cartesian plane could help us so we could say well what happens if we put a grid on top of this so i said to him you know what to find that spider you need to walk four meters forwards so it's going to go one two three four so it's going to go four that way and then he needs to go three meters towards those other windows, so it's going to go one, two, three. So where four and three intersect, that's where the spider is. And that's one way of, and there's an apocryphal as in a made up story about how that's how the Cartesian plane was created and invented by Rene Descartes to start with. He's looking, lying in his bed, looking up at the ceiling and thought, well, how would I describe where a certain point on the ceiling is? So that's one way of looking at it, to say, well, if we could put a grid on top of something, so I can put a grid up here, and I can put a grid this way, two, three, four, I can then perfectly describe any point in two-dimensional space. I can't say, well, it's five away. It is five away from the door, but then I don't know if it's sitting here, 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 but we could make this grid and go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and say, well, how do I know whether this is sitting at 
4, 3, would I describe it like that or would I describe it as 3, 4? So we always say, well, let's just make a convention to say that we'll always do our x values first and our y values second. So in this case, the x's are to do with the 4's. So we're going to scrap that and say it's always going to be like this. And then we've got our other convention which says, well, if we're going left, we talk about those as negatives. So I wouldn't talk about this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but I'd say that's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. This part here is 0, and actually I could describe what the passage looks like outside, because I could just extend this and say, well, let's keep going along this being our x-axis, and let's make this one we said up and down our y-axis. So if we want to describe what's happening in the passage outside, so you're going to go down here and then down the ramp, I could say, well, this point here, well, negative 1 was to the left, so then this would be 1, and so we could continue our grid this way and say 2, that's 2 meters, 3 meters, and you're probably heading into Miss Flanagan's class by then. So I could describe and say, if you're in Miss Flanagan's class and the spider's moved across there, maybe the spider's sitting across at this point here. So now our diagram's getting a little bit messy. So let's say that the spider's moved to this point. How would I describe spider friend, spider number two, being over here? Well, in this case, now we've sorted out our positives and negatives. We'd say, well, it's sitting at one, two, three, four. So that's its x value. And its y value is one, two up from where we said the origin was the zero point which is at the door to my classroom. So if the spider moved and it was sitting over, let's put it down here and say now it's in Miss Boynton's class. Spider friend number three. How are we going to describe where the spider is? Well, we've got our grid set up. So we can go, it's one, two, three to the left. So I can already describe it as negative three. And how far down is it? Well, my perfectly to scale diagram, one, two, three, four. It's gone down, it's along the y-axis, down by four, so it must be at negative four. So this point here we could describe and say to anyone coming in, there's the spider, it's just moved to Miss Boynton's class, please go along and catch the spider, it's sitting at negative three, because that's how far left it is, and it's sitting down by four, so now the spider is sitting, that's how we could describe that point. So we can describe any point. We can say it's gone to the door. So as our last point to our story, I could say, what happens if it's sitting right here in the corner of our classroom, our maths classroom, it's sitting over there. What's that point? Well, how far along the x-axis have we gone? We haven't gone anywhere. So it's zero. How far along the y-axis, how far up and down have we gone? We haven't gone Anyway, so it's at zero. So thus ends the story for now. Please, questions based on that though. That's one way of thinking of, the, of how do you describe where a point is. You just put a grid on top of it and then you can describe it with these numbers perfectly accurately any given point on the Cartesian plane. Sir? Yes. How is a blind person going to know which is negative, like the negative side of the positive? Well, good question. So they need to be orientated. So they know that this door of the classroom, they know that if they're facing north, so the sun's just risen, where does it rise? In the east and gone across, then they know that this is kind of they're sitting at zero at the door. And they know if they feel just to the left, they'll feel the wall of our classroom and the other wall of our classroom and know, okay, cool, I'm facing upwards. Otherwise, we just tell them.